welcome to another Age of Sigmar Battle Report hosted by Semi-Casual Gaming with your host, Nathan. Hey, I'm uh, bringing my uh, Soulblight Gravelords out again. I haven't been able to snag a game at the shop, so I thought I'd just play a game against my own team again, just to feature. Um, one thing I'm pretty excited about for the uh, Undead is I got some Grave Guards, so that's kind of the point of this particular report, is just to kind of see how they'll play. Um, I will note that the official game will be like... 750 points but it's actually like 650 points i think it's like 640 to 660 or something like that between the two i think they're like actually only like 10 points apart but with my current collection of undead and basically my ogre how they how the numbers lined up it was either do it within 10 points of each other at lower points or like 35 different points and i just thought it just keep it simple and just run what I have here. So um, I'm going to go over the lists. Here's a table. Very exciting. Um, the mission type. And then we will, I'll roll out, I'll roll the uh, starting roll before I actually deploy just so I can get everything all set up. But I just want to go over the lists first. First of all, Soul Black Grave Lords. Um, I am bringing the White King on Skeletal Steed. I'm kind of mid painting him, trying to do a Sugar School. Dies de la Moratis theme for him, so uh, conversion project. Um, he will be a general, and I will be giving him. Um, I'm running the Legion of Night, by the way. Um, so he'll have the uh, command trait, the one that the unbending will. Thank you. It has a 12 inch bubble of no battle shock tests around him. And then his artifact is going to be the soul, the Curse Blade, which is, at the start of each of my hero phases, I pick an enemy hero. There's only one over there. And on a 5+, I deal more wound to them and heal this dude. So it's kind of a way to regenerate his hit points, because he doesn't have any other way of doing it in this particular army. Um, you know, and I was looking through the book. Sorry, quick rant for the White Kings. I know they're kind of a sub-faction now within the Soul Black Grave Lords, but... They're the only dynasty that makes sense for a white king to be the general in is the Legion of Night. Unless you're running any vampires, because that's the only one of the five dynasties that doesn't require either vampires or the Avangoriai, which require monsters. Like, yeah, technically I could run any of the other dynasties, but I'd basically be running none of the benefits and, and just going for artifacts and whatnot, so... You know, so well, at least with Legion of Night, I get plus one save and all my death rattle out here on the first battle round. So that could be potentially helpful from the one shooting unit here. So um, supporting him, I have a Necromancer. His spell is going to be the Overwhelming Dread, of course, the minus one to hit. And then um, I have uh, two units of death rattle skeletons, a 10-man and a 20-man unit. Um... And then I have the 10-man Grave Guards. They're going to be with Curse Blades. And everything has its full command, although the Spears, I never actually modeled them as such. That's just how I run them. Nobody seems to complain, and that's just the way I go. Um, and while technically at this many, few points, you don't really need three battle line, uh, technically the White King makes the Grave Guards battle line. So, hey, guess what? They are now battle lines. So that's 650, 40, 50, something like that points for the Soul Black Grave Lords. And on the other side, the Ogre Maw Tribes. I have a Butcher today. I actually pulled out this model. He's actually going to end up being one of my man-eaters, but I didn't feel like fishing out my old metal models, so he's going to be the acting Butcher for today. Um, his spell is going to be the uh, Greasy Deluge, which is also minus one to hit. Um, I just thought I'd keep it simple for myself. Basically, one spell per turn. They both have their stock spells, and both of their spells give minus one to hit to the opponent. Um, we have three units of gluttons, three each. They're all going to be iron fists, again, just to keep it simple. And then I have a unit of four lead belchers. And then um, just to, you know, run the tribe I always run, it's meat fists. So all the gluttons are going to get, you know, everyone that charges gets another dice on the charge roll. And then um, the character's going to have the automatic artifact that's reroll one to saves. And then the... Um, if he's in close combat or eating, he gets an extra command point at the start of the hero phase. And then he has a, com a command booth that can give these guys 
plus one to their bites but otherwise it's you know it's just kind of what it is pretty quick pretty simple straightforward again i think there's 660 points something like that and i i could fish out the points but you know uh mission i'm just gonna play my good old classic favorite the shifting objectives you have the three treasure chests in the middle i'll roll off one two three four five six the one that wins the roll is worth two uh, victory points the rest are worth one and then i believe i also read in the rules that if a battle line takes it which is pretty much everything here but characters they get an additional point so all right um we'll get these guys set up here and then once they're set up i'll quickly roll the dice and then we'll uh get this game afoot all right so here is the initial deployment we have white king skeletons with the uh, necromancer and um the two grave sites in their deployment the other two grave sites in the middle the uh, grave guard and the big blob of skeletons are in um the under the zombie reserves the graveyard reserves the skeleton reserves whatever you want to call it anyways they'll be popping up shortly over here we have a whole bunch of ogres uh, basically bulls line or <laughs> gluttons Show my age here. Uh, gluttons lining up across from each of the units. The uh, lead belchers lining across from the uh, characters and the or the uh, uh, butcher going wherever he darn well needs to go. So, all right, let's go ahead and whoo, roll over the dice. Hi guys. So, red and green are going to be for reds for ogres, greens for undead. The white's going to be. I'm just going to roll right now at the same time, whichever objective is primary this round. So. Let's see who goes first. Undead and objective one, which is the objective in the far back. So we shall begin shortly with undead turn one. Okay, very exciting. All right, so we're gonna start off with the curse blade. Before I forget, um, we're gonna roll this on a five up. The butcher takes a mortal wound. Butcher takes a mortal wound, very exciting. We'll grab a white dice here and Look, first wound of the game, and obviously the Viking King has suffered no wounds, so he cannot recover any wounds. Now we're going to go ahead and get off into the rolling for spells. Um, obviously the debuffs and such are too far away, so we're just going to go for a Mystic Shield, needing a uh, 6, I believe. 6 is good enough. And then um, Dispel Attempts by the Butcher, 6 was not enough, so we're going to go ahead and give the um, the White King fellow reroll ones to save. So. There's that, um, and then we're going to go ahead and move, do the movement really quick. Essentially, he gets to move 12 inches, which is roughly half the board, so he's going to go straight forward. Those guys are going to shuffle forward, and then I'm going to drop the bodies here in a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'll just do this off camera because it's hard for me to hold the camera and dump bodies everywhere. So, here's before. And drop. All right. Graveguard over here, facing off against some gluttons. And the 20 skeletons screening out and um, filling up both of the uh, treasure sites and giving the White King some coverage. Plus, they're now immune to battle shock. So, um, these guys over here, I'm going to go ahead and roll a couple of advances. So, um, red dice will be the skeletons, and the green dice will be the necromancers. I'm just going to roll them really quick. <laughs> so, the skeletons move five inches forward. And let's see if we can do this in such a way where we don't lose the entire tape measure. So they're going to shuffle forward roughly two, 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 making all the special sound effects, of course. And I'll just plunk the uh, necromancer in behind them. So that's it for the movement. There is no uh, shooting, there are no charges I'm going to declare because we want to claim objectives right now. So really at the end of this point, we're going to be uh, controlling all three objectives, all with battle lines. So that'll be worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points for a soul light max turn. So we'll uh, come back after I clean up the dice and take a look at what the ogres do to respond. All right, so bottom of one for ogres, um, no command phase fancy stuff. So we're just gonna roll for our spell. We're going to go ahead and cast the greasy deluge. Needs a seven to go off. Five does not work. 
Awesome. Okay, that's it for that. So we'll go ahead and do our movements. So all these guys are moving base eight. So I'm fairly certain that with the power of numbers, that yeah, basically they're all going to end up being about three inches away from their charge targets. So we're going to go like one, two, three. And then these guys are actually going to go ahead and go over here to support. So we're going to just conga line our way over, I guess, or dance, do the electric boogaloo, something, something, something. So about three inches away from here, we're going to open up. Let's see, I mean, it's a 10 inch charge. I think the D6 shots from them will be slightly more important. We'll save them up for the next um, wave, especially if they end up getting a double turn or something of that sort. So there we go here. Very exciting. Um, we're going to do shooting really quick. They're going to be targeting the skeleton warriors. So they did not move, so they have 46 shots. That's 17 shots, so awesome. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. Trying to be more mindful of the camera, so looking for fours and then threes, fours. Yikes, lots of threes. Sad pandas, sad pandas, sad pandas. All right, seven hits, wounding on threes. And that's five wounds. Now, first turn, they do get a plus one to the save, so they're up to a, I believe, a four up save. So I'll check it off camera, and if it matters, then we'll see if it matters. So, uh, no fours were rolled, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, one was blocked, and now, um, oh, that's right. It was five up because they get a plus one for first turn, but it's a minus one red. So, five up regardless. Now, four up, six. Four, six up, deathless minion saves, rerolling ones because of the banner. So save one, rerolling ones. Save two, so two skeletons are plunked off. We will take them out of the middle here. They, however, do not get to come back with the, you know, full stream roll during the combat phase, but they do get to come back during the power up phase at the beginning of my next hero phase, blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay, Sh exciting was shooting was exciting words are hard. Alright, we're going to go ahead and roll across first unit of gluttons. Five will make it in. And I guess technically I need to roll all these first, so they're just going to go plonk, to plonk, to plonk. And we have five plus one for looking for sixes. I'll just re-roll one of these. Alright, we got two sixes for mortal wounds. Now, if I recall straight, the Deathless Minions works off of having grave sites nearby, so we're going to see if we can get a couple of six ups, rolling ones. Nope, so that is two grave guards dead so far. Now, the next unit of Gluttons rolling gets an eight, so they will come around like so. And then this is why we probably shouldn't send our elite units unsupported into combat, but. Looking for sixes. We got one six. So six of Deathless Minions. Nope. So that kills another fine fellow. Oop. That's three down. Alright. Butcher charge. Three. Exactly enough. And oh, by the way, I get an extra dice for the death for their charge because the meat fist does not matter. That's what happens when I forget. Plus one for meat fist. One from the Butcher. All right, six up. Deathless Minions. Nope, did not work. So there's one more dead skeleton we will pull from here. And the final charge from the last unit of Gluttons. Nine, yep, they get to go. And they're gonna go up and around here. All right. And we got eight dice here. We need two more. Just continually piling on. That's because nine plus one from 
And we're looking for sixes. We got one, two sixes. Six of Deathless Minions. We'll reroll once. Nope. Two more skeletons. Crash and burn. We're going to go ahead and go one from back here and one right here. So. Okay, so that's a good number of models removed pre-game, so we'll see um, we'll see how this goes. So we're going to pick who we wish to pick to fight first. I'll actually pick these three gluttons to attack into them first because they need to be dealt with sooner than later. So each of them have three base attacks, plus one for the champion, which is the dude in front here. So we've got ten attacks to start off with. Five, ten... Magical tray floating ominously across the table. Alright, we are looking for threes. We have six hits. Now, these are the Iron Fist ones, so that would have been a lot more hits of that if I had chosen those guys. But alas, it's not meant to be. And all but one. So we have five. We got no rend. They're going to be five up base, but because of the first turn, they're going to be a four up save now. So saved all but two. So that's two down to piece. So now we're going to do six up uh, whatever you call it. Uh, Deathless Minions and then re-rolling. Nope. So that's four more dead Graveguard. One, two, three. Oh dear. I guess we'll take away the banner because that's just how that goes. So um, the remaining three are going to go ahead and well, hit, tuck in, pile in, fight. Um, I think all three of them can reach the other units, so I'm going to have them all do their attacks. Um, I'm going to pause really quick because I don't remember how many attacks they have, and my rules are on my phone. So, one moment, please. All right, they have two attacks base. Okay, so two, four, six, plus one for the champion. All going into the glutton unit that hasn't fought yet. And we're looking for threes and then fours. So, threes. That's all but two. And fours. Well, that sucks. <laughs> shame, shame, shame. Alright, um, the next pack of gluttons over there are going to go ahead and attack into the skeletons here. Um, actually, no. Because technically, strategically speaking, I don't want them to regenerate and they're going to have to activate next. So, to play against the uh, undead... I would actually have these three attack next because then the skeletons are going to have to activate and they're not going to get to do their regeneration and my gluttons are going to be able to punch back. So we'll, we'll play with that. So this is the 10 attacks going into the grave guard. Threes. Oof -da. And threes. Now only three go through. They have a chance of surviving this. So uh, four up saves. Or not. Four six ups. I need to make at least see two six ups here to keep the unit. Nope. Okay, so the whole point of this battle report was to feature the Grave Guard and they just died ingloriously without doing any damage back. Good work. <laughs> okay, so now the uh, skeletons are going to go ahead and do their pile in. So he's going to wrap around. They're going to go like so. I mean, they're kind of stuck in due to the spread out, so the objective's going to get bumped out of the way, so while we can do all of our appropriate pile-ins, essentially what's going to happen is like so. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that can reach the gluttons, and I'd say well, I'll give them four going into the character, so... Nine and four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. The unit champion is actually next to the butcher. He is the yellow one. So we got nine attacks. Hitting and wounding on a threes and fours. So we got four hits. No rerolls, sadly. Because I didn't pick the character to do that beforehand. Um three wounds against the gluttons who will have a five up save <laughs> they save all of them and do a mortal wound back so um skeleton warriors 
Nope, so instead, so instead of doing any wounds on their own attack, they end up killing one of their own. <sighs> okay, that's great. And we got five um, attacks into the character threes. We got three and fours. Good, good show. Good show, old chap. All right, so we'll just go ahead and do the butcher next. Butcher's got four attacks hitting on threes. Wounding on threes. And one at minus two for the cleaver. Actually, no, it's minus one because I picked the one with the extra attack. I think there are only three attacks, actually, for the one fellow. So I'm just going to reroll it. He, yeah, he only has three attacks because he's just a butcher. So threes. So one exact result. But I'm just doing it for justice reasons. Okay. Uh, so minus two or one. So their five up goes to a four up, back to a five up. Yay, the six right there, the white one. The yay, they actually saved something. So, um, oh, he also gets his bite. Okay, no, he doesn't. Um, and finally, the remaining gluttons, which I think I forgot to do the bites on the other unit, the graveyard, but it didn't really matter, because obviously they're all dead. Showing there. Threes. And threes. All right, we got five at no rent, so their five up goes to a four up. Save two, so that's uh, six damage in total. We're gonna do six six ups. Save one. Oh, I rolled a perfect straight. Gotta love those. Reroll one. Too bad I can't do that in Yahtzee. So five of them go down to the uh, onslaught. So we're gonna pull from one, two, three, four, Five. Yeah, I'm getting rid of the champion, but there's a chance I can bring I can bring him back in a little bit. So, well, good news is there's no battle shock tests because <laughs> he's unbendingly willing them to say, "Hey, don't die," and the um, the grave guard are just dead. So, um, yeah, that was pretty exciting. However. He is more than three inches away, so he actually does not claim that objective. I know, I know. I think that in the officially in Age of Sigmar, it's six inches, but my table's so small, I'm just making it three inches. But either way, they control this one, so that's one, two. Nothing there, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually have uh, six skeletons to two ogres, so they'll still control it. So the um, ogre mile tribes only have. Um, what did you call it? Uh, two points, so it's seven to two. Um, soul blight right now. Let's roll to see the start of the next turn. So um, I should actually pick the dice I usually use. So reds ogres, green is undead, and green wins dice. No, nope. don't drop the dice. Don't drop the dice, silly. Oh, okay. Double turn ogres. I think that's probably going to be game right there. So okay, we'll see how well this goes. Um, Top of one, two, ogres. Okay, so starting off with, we're going to go ahead and have the uh, the butcher. He's going to cast his maw. We'll see if we can just do a lot of damage. Doesn't matter. Okay, so he's not good for spells. Um, movement. Well, those guys are out of combat, close combat. So these guys are going to move there. Basically be about three inches away from them. These boys are going to hang out and sit right here on top of the objective. Uh, Butcher is going to go and be roughly three inches away, and everybody else will stay still because lead belchers are clearly not going to be worrying about it too much this battle. Uh, 46 shots going into the skeletons. Uh, three, six, seven, eight. So, because they're really worse, they blew their. I can't say that on camera. <laughs> Never mind. Um, three fours. Okay, four hits, so perfectly even. Threes. Perfectly uneven. Alright, four minus one. Skeletons are up to a six up regular save. And then a six up deathless minions. Rerolling one. Nope, so that's four dead skeletons. <clears throat> Plop -a doodle. All right, charges. 
these guys into the blob of skeletons over here. Roll a six. So, whoop, 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 whoop. And rolling four. Seven dice. Looking for our sixes. Again, plus one for Meat Fist. Getting one. Six up. Uh, Deathless Minions. Nope. So, one goes down here. And Butcher's going to charge. Seven. Blurp. Four, six, eight. Eight. Looking for sixes. One. Six. Deathless Minions for himself. He doesn't get a reroll because he's not a character. So he's down to six wounds remaining. He will go up to a one as well. So they are one and one. And I believe he's eight wounds to so his seven wounds. Or seven wounds to six wounds now. And that's it for that. So we'll go ahead and do um, our close combats first. So we'll do the gluttons over there. Try to finish that unit off. Three, six, ten. Threes, oh, lovely, and threes, one, only one makes it through, they're back up to a five up save now, so, doesn't matter, and deathless minions, doesn't matter, so, two more skeletons are down, but I can at least get these guys to stand back up here in a second, Death Lord with White King. That's the name. <laughs> Helps to remember names. All right, he has to be forced to me take a check and take a look at the profile. Give me one second. <laughs> okay, he has three attacks with his main weapon and then two attacks with the speed. The main weapon is threes and threes. One so far. And minus one against the butcher, so the butcher's at six up. Nope. So it's D3 damage against the Butcher for one damage. Right. Two kicks from the horses. Four is in force. Well, just a horsey. One at no rend. Five up. Nope. And yeah, that's another damage. Very exciting. Okay. These uh, clans are going to attack into those guys now. So we'll get three, six. Nine, ten. Threes, that was success. Those are fails, so six. So that's much more successful than the last round. And three, why do I always talk too loud? We got one success. Needing a five up. Nope. And then needing sixes. Hope saved one, so one skeleton. Quack, goes down. He died outside of phase, so he doesn't get to regenerate. All right, um, we'll do these guys over here first. So I got two dice on four up. They get to stand back up and fight. One gets to stand back up and fight. The other one gets to literally roll perfectly over there. So we have four attacks. Threes and fours. Oh, there. Now that hit. Here we go. And one. Five up save. Nope, I do a one wound to one glutton. Boop. Good works. Butcher fights back. He's got three attacks, him threes and threes. All hit. Two wound. And he has a three up save, so minus one goes up to a four up save. Saves one. And it is. The minus one is two damage flat, so two six up deathless minions. Nothing, so he takes two damage, and then one bite, also threes, and threes, and three up again, <laughs> and six up Deathless Minions, no, so the White King goes to four, so we have three wounds remaining versus the uh, Butcher, now these skeletons are going to pile in and fight back. And roll a four up for that one that fell. Nope. So he stays out. That leaves eight remaining to strike back against the ogres in front of them. Four. Eight. 
threes. Good, good. We got five hits. And fours. That's three wounds. No rent, so five up safe. <laughs> they take two wounds and then flex a mortal wound back at the skeletons who have six up deathless minions. Don't save it. So we lose one more and they take two wounds. So we'll do it to that guy over there. Okay, so I believe as everyone's attacked, skeleton, skeleton, white king, glutton, butcher, gluttons, cell, and since both of those units are fully within 12 inches of the White King, they do not have to take Battle Shock tests. And since Ogres haven't lost a model yet, they don't have to take Battle Shock tests either. So um, at this point, they gain. Oh, you know what? I forgot to roll for the start of the at the start of the turn. Which one is the important one? Three. Oh, this one down here. So that's one, two, three points for them. Four. And then I've got two, actually the one guy still haven't reached, so they only got four points this turn, so it's currently Soul Blight to Ogres, seven to six, and now it's heading to bottom two, um, Soul Blight, so. Alright, let me look at my notes and we'll get started in the next step. Okay, so the start of the turn, first off we're going to roll for our regeneration, the um, start of the turn, so. That skeleton unit here gets to bring back ooh, three models, so that's all three that they lost, which is very nice. One, two, three, and then that unit over there is three as well. Perfect. Good thing I kept their bodies piled on this side of the table. So, all right, yep. and we're gonna go like like this. So one. Two, three. Okay, keep them, keep them squished and separated from the uh, table ends and such. Then we're gonna roll for the curse blade. So on a five up, we're gonna swap wounds. Nope. Okay. So no bonus moral wound on them. And now we get to cast a spell. <laughs> so many things to do in this phase. Maybe that's why I play ogres because I don't have to think about the. Uh, hero phase as much <laughs> so um, they're actually back up to full health so let's try to get Van Hell's Dance Macabre off on them I believe that's a six or a seven I'll have to double check <sighs> of course we have to check yep so it goes off on a six so that actually goes off now we'll see if the butcher can dispel seven yes so no spell no spell for you okay um, movement, everybody's tied up, so we're going to just go straight on to the part where we fight, because everyone else is tied up, so, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the, um, hmm, well, who do we want to go first? We're going to go ahead and act the White King go first, and he's going to be smart and pile in this way, so he's actually close enough to give them the 12 inch bubble and then the 12 inch bubble and be on the objective so uh, he has his three attacks threes and threes let's see if we can roll slightly better than last round nope and threes okay <laughs> and two horse kicks let's see if the horse can kick okay never mind so yeah characters just don't do much sadly those three gluttons are going to go next so we've got Three, six, nine, one for the champion. Hitting on threes. That's all but one. Okay. Wounding on threes. That's six successes. So we have six five up saves. Saved two. And that turns into uh, uh, eight deathless minions. I think that's actually the whole unit right there, so we better make a bunch of sixes. We made one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, there's exactly seven in the unit. So that's that's that whole unit right there. Well, you know, I can't blame them for trying. It's just how the the dice gods are playing this time, so we have at least ten attacks over here. Let's see if we can get them all rolling. 
accordingly. So hitting on threes. And wounding on fours. Ooh, there's three. So there is a slight chance they might actually kill an ogre. And five up saves. Oh, a mortal wound back, but does kill an ogre. So let's see if they deathless minions that. Nope. So they lose one skeleton. And this ogre goes down. All right, boys, you've lost half your army, but you've taken down one model. You're doing great. <laughs> All right, uh, those guys are going to go ahead and punch back. So they got seven attacks, threes, and two misses. So five successes. Do basic math. Threes to wound. All wounds. So five up saves. Oh, no. That could be the whole unit there, too. 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10. I need at least 1, 6. Actually, no, I don't even... I need a 2, 6s because that's... 9 fails. That's that whole unit of skeletons, too. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just have to roll the, uh... Butcher really quick. Threes. And threes. And four up save. Saved. And invite. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. Um, at the end of the battle shock phase, that whole unit's dead. That whole unit's dead. Um, and he's on top of there. So he's not. We're not going to get any objectives this round. But at the end of the battle shock phase, I do get to roll one dice. So on a five up, a unit that's been wholly destroyed gets to come back at half strength. So. Nope. So, with that being said, um, there is no way that they can recover from this because it's just the characters left. And, like, let me just, just out of curiosity, I'm just going to roll, see who gets to go first. So, yeah, ogres are even going first this round. So, yeah, it's over. They will just pummel the two remaining characters, so they're not even going to get a chance to respond, so... Yeah, I think that's why double turns... Well, a lot of people don't like double turns in this game, because the the ogres basically just mowed right through the entire army with no resistance whatsoever. Uh, I'm definitely going to blame out my dice. Like, the white... The Grave Guards did hardly anything. The White King practically did nothing. Uh, the skeletons poked a little and actually took one model off the table. <laughs> but, I mean, really at this point, those guys could even just advance to take that objective. We've got the other three objectives. Those two gluttons can charge, take out the necromancer, and it's pretty much game at this point. So, um, they're going to be able to get full points, and even without, I'd have to try and, at the end of my battle shock phase, try and get another unit back because of how that endless legions works but that's a five up and i really don't see my two guys killing anything else at this point so i'm i'm going to go ahead and call it at this time time with a uh uh ogre ma tribes victory i just don't know how to get them to win against them because ogres are just a tough matchup and i don't the the, the real problem is that my summonable units are weak to gluttons. Gluttons can put out a lot of damage. I mean, even with three guys, with ten attacks. Like you guys saw, they they wiped an entire unit of ten skeletons with no backlash whatsoever. And I don't, I can't really think of any way to make these guys more competitive. I mean, yeah, I kind of set the grave guard up to being double charged. That was kind of foolish on my part. But I was kind of thinking they would have been able to tank a little bit more. But alas, I thought. Poorly, but they're also only one wound models, so I think that's that's what really holds them back. I mean, I bet you if the Grave Guard were two wounds, they would be far more frightening. But then again, if you can run thirty of them in a unit, and then the whole idea of the regeneration and stuff that that could be a real a real disaster. So um, yeah, so that's just kind of how it goes. Um, it was pretty straightforward and uh hopefully i'll figure out some way to make these two lists a more interesting and balanced game but then again dice are all dice and 
when I'm whiffing my attacks with my characters and my graveguard like missed all their attacks. They, there's not much more I can say about that. So, okay. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this nice kind of quick battle report. I'll uh, try to get some more out. I know with a uh, third edition looming on the horizon, um, that's definitely going to change the flow of my game. So I'll see exactly how they end up um, rolling and seeing if I can even get a hold of any of the rules. Hopefully they'll do a chunk of free rules like they did with this edition in the app. So otherwise if I have to buy rules, ugh, more money. Nah. So, well, please like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I definitely did enjoy getting the guys back on the table and rolling again. So um, hope to hear back from you guys and see you on the next report. All right, have a good night.